Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 77 and the question is number 3. So it reads, a particle is projected with initial speed u down a hill, which is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal. The line of projection makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. So we're given a sketch, and I'm going to draw that now. Oh, that's terrible. Like so. Now the first thing we need to do is note that this is y axis and this is the x axis. Now we need to be able to come up with a new x prime, y prime axis. And how we do that is we create the x prime axis along the actual the uh, the incline. All right, with positive in this direction and the y prime perpendicular to it, like that. All we did is rotate the x axis, x prime, uh, x x y plane anti-clockwise or excuse me clockwise with theta degrees the next thing we need to notice is that we always need our angle of projection here with reference or with respect to the x prime y prime plane and at the moment we don't we have it in reference to the x axis because look it's where it's with regards to the horizontal however if you have done a bit of geometry you'll realize that in a shape like this these angles are the same which is exactly what we've got here. So if we look, we have that shape there. That means this angle here is theta. That means we have another angle, which I'm going to call gamma. And that's equal to alpha plus theta. And gamma, of course, is with respect to the x prime, y prime plane. Now, how, how do we do that? I'll show you here. Like so. So we no longer need gamma, we know what that is. So now we need to resolve our initial velocity vector. So we need two vectors which when added together give it. They've got to be parallel to the x prime, y prime plane. So we have this vector which is parallel and we have this vector here which is parallel to the y prime plane. So this becomes u sub y and this one here becomes u sub x. All right. And we can just resolve that becoming u times the sine of gamma. This one becomes u cos gamma. So I'll just write that in. u cos gamma, u sine gamma. Look, u sub x is going that direction. Parallel to the x prime plane in the positive direction. So it's positive. And so is u sub y because it's in the positive y prime direction. So that's good so far. Now the next thing we need to do is the more difficult part, which is resolving gravity. Gravity is a bit of a pain. I'm going to move my, my y prime plane up here just because we know where it is and we just we don't need that anymore. So do we need any of this? We don't really. I'm just going to keep the planes themselves. Alright? So we have the x prime, y prime plane, and the x y plane like that. Alright? Now gravity acts in the negative y direction. That's gravity. So we need to resolve this into the x prime, y prime plane. And how do we do that? Well, you need to be very careful doing this because, first of all, you draw your, you want to draw your two vectors, which when added together give the vector g. And they've got to be parallel to the x prime, y prime plane. So start from the base of g and draw parallel to the y prime plane until you get parallel now to the x prime plane and then draw across. They need to be in these directions in order to work. This is g sub y, this is g sub x. Now, we also know, and we did this in questions 1 and 2, that if I have two angles like this, we'll call this one beta, and we have another one which bisects it at a right angle or perpendicularly, call it theta, this is a right angle, then theta is equal to beta. And that is the case which we have here, and I'll show you why. Because if we extend, if we extend the y prime or g sub y down, it'll actually bisect the x prime. Because if I draw it across like this, it'll bisect it perpendicularly. So that means this angle here, uh, we'll do that. I'll just do it out down here altogether, right? Let's bear with me a moment. We know that this is the x prime plane. 
Now I know the x prime plane is at an angle of theta to the x axis like that. But we also know that g is like this. There are the two vectors for g. g sub x and g sub y. If I extend g sub y like this, it cuts it at a right angle, which means that this angle here is also equal to theta. All right. So that means that we have theta up here, and we're going to get g sub x is equal to g times the sine of theta, and g sub y is equal to g cos theta. Now, is that all? The answer is no. Look at the directions here. g sub x is parallel to the positive x prime direction. So it's going to accelerate your particle. However, g sub y is in the negative y prime direction, so it's going to decelerate it. But we know that we're going to call g equal to minus 9.81. So what we want is that when we plug this in, it will give us a negative for g sub y and a positive for g sub x. And how we do that is by putting a negative here. So negative times negative gives a positive, which is an acceleration. And negative times positive gives us a deceleration. So let's note those. This is g cos theta minus g sine theta. All right, I think we're, we're doing okay so far. And we just need to finish this off. We've done all the hard parts. So we need to say v is equal to u plus a t. So it's equal to u cos gamma, no, not, gamma, not theta, u cos gamma, u plus a t, like that. And we know that s is equal to u t plus a half a t squared. Like that. Similarly over here we have u sine of theta plus g cos theta t and we have u sine gamma, that's not theta, excuse me, that's gamma, what am I doing? This was a gamma the whole time, excuse me. u sine gamma plus half g cos theta t squared. And this, of course, is t, and so is this. So let's just check that at the back of the book. Yeah, that's correct. The only difference in the back of the book is it has the left side positive and the right side negative. And I've told you, I've explained that before, the reason is we say g is equal to minus 9.8, and it says minus g is equal to 9.8. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.